Hello everyone and welcome to this week's short video tutorial. This would be board number 62 from the free ebook that's available on the World Shang-Chi Federation website. Uh, the title of the book is Deception and Countermeasures in the Shang-Chi Opening. Uh, this board uh, will be a continuation of the of various um, opening traps in the pawn opening. So without further ado, let us begin. Pawn opening, pawn versus pawn opening system and the thundering cannon now in this board black would choose to play e7 plus 5 to deny this cannon a target of attack and to consolidate his defense this is a steadfast counter and other commonly played variations will include c d equals to 5 c2 equals to 5 for the central cannon now, this is considered orthodox now red will develop his host uh, attempting the three step tiger something of the three sets three three step tiger sorry and this would be the move of deception in this spot uh, because there are no there are no pieces at the moment to protect the central pawn uh, black will try to launch his attack in this manner now uh, you usually uh, h8 plus 7 is played and red will be able to develop his right flank, get to the riverbank to control the important lines, and will still command the initiative. But black will still have a playable game. So in this spot, uh, we will shall examine this rather awkward looking move of C8 plus 4, whereby red, black would now threaten to capture the red pawn. There are two major variations that we we'll discuss. The first of which would be H8 plus 7 to defend the central pawn, which might seem like a natural thing to do. The other would be to, to forego the central pawn and play R1 equals to 2 instead. Now, uh, in the first variation, our H8 plus 7 was played, <coughs> whereby red protected the central uh, pawn in this manner. Now, this would seem like a normal thing to do. <coughs> uh, Black will now develop his horse so that uh, so, sorry if red played R1 equals to 2 Black would be able to play H9 equals to 8 to form blockade so in this board red tries to create opportunities by developing his left chariot early in the game now e7 plus 5 to consolidate the defense uh, which is quite often seen is not a good idea because that would start immediately start developing his right flank and since red was also attacking or trying to attack the pawn rank black would simply push the pawn across the river and black would still be able to acquire a satisfactory situation now, uh, both colors will still be contention. So e7 plus 5 uh, might not be such a good idea or it would not be as proactive as r9 plus 1 for the rank chariot. So at this point in time, black would start attacking. Now, forcing the elephant to move. The, the chariot crosses the palace and black would start attacking this uh, left flank and black as can be seen at, by this point in time black would already have two major pieces that have crossed the river and were attacking Just consolidating defense and at this point in time black would start his final assault with p3 plus 1 black protects the cannon and red is forced to defend the riverbank in this manner. So uh, it would not be a good idea to try to trade pawns in this manner because, oh, sorry, to trade material in this manner because after trading, this the might of this chariot would now be can be seen. And after trading more material, Red would have gained a central cannon and was now threatening to go for a checkmate. Black would have seized the initiative and controlled the situation, which would be undesirable. Hence, P7 plus 1 is not a good idea, and Red should try to uh, protect the pawn in this manner. 
So I could continue to capture the pawn and trade material and still con get to control the uh, capture the central pawn to control the central file. Got it. And after trading material, we can see that uh, red pieces uh, do not have to fear about any lack of development. This horse could be uh, could be developed very soon. It could charge across the river, and in comparison, the move the major piece the red major pieces would not have been developed much, and black could have um, since the initiative and can be very optimistic about the game going to the mid game. So. After black tried some mischief with c8 plus 4, in the first variation, red played c8 plus 7 because he was overly concerned with the central pawn. Now, in the book, r1 equals to 2 was the a recommended move for red in this situation, whereby red would, that would <coughs> boldly sacrifice his central pawn, which black would take. And red would now would be the correct time to play h8 plus 7 because the black cannon would be forced to move. Now, uh, it would not be a good idea for red to try to play r2 plus 8 followed by c3 equals to 2 because this chariot could be easily chased away by black who will consolidate his central file and then retreat his cannon. So red would not have gained anything much for his efforts and wasted some tempi in, in the meantime. Uh, the threat of the central cannon would now become magnified manifold. So uh, after h8 plus 7 is played, black would be forced to move the cannon to safety. Now uh, c5 minus 1, uh, there are two intersections. One will be c5 minus 1, the other will be c5 minus 2, as can be seen here. What would happen if c5 minus 1 were played? Red would play c8. Uh, C8 equals C8 plus, plus 2 to offer the trade of uh, cannons and black would be forced to retreat his cannon one more move. So he will waste another move uh, at this time and as can be seen black would have developed five of his six major pieces while black only had played the only had uh, one move one piece that had been developed uh, by this time. So black would fall very far behind in terms of development of the pieces and red would uh, get, get to increase his initiative. And as for the black cannon, it would simply be harmless because no other pieces were available to help it to, one, one, to, help it to attack. So by itself, the central cannon or hey hunter cannon in this case would not be, a big, would not be much of an issue. So c5 minus 2 was played. Uh, red would continue to take the opportunity to develop his material. Black would try to do so, hoping to gain some momentum with an attack on the central file, which would be prevented by red's r h6 plus 7, whereby red would not be prepared to trade away the, uh, the black central cannon. And red charges the horse across the river, forcing Black to take some precautionary measures. Uh, it would not be proactive for Black to play c5 plus 2 at this point in time, because let's say if Black played c5 plus 2, Black could advance his chariot, r2 plus 4, followed by r2 equals to 5, to dislodge the central cannon. So, Although Black had gained a Black Hunter cannon, there were simply no other pieces that could support it or land it or could reinforce the attack uh, in the <coughs> at this point in time. So in the book, H2 plus 1 was played, and Black Red would simply remove the biggest threat on the board. So by this time, by the 8th ply, you can see that uh, Red would have developed his right chariot and this black chariot would have uh, trouble uh, would face a little bit of trouble trying to get developed and we would continue with r2 plus 6 of course 
uh, since the headhunter cannon was now not was now already solved, uh, Red will not want to trade material. Instead, apply pressure on the uh, black horse. Now, what ha what would happen uh, in the book? Black would be proactive and actually sacrifice the horse, hoping that he could uh, attack get another headhunter cannon for attack. However, Black was forcing his moves in this situation because by this time, uh, Rip could simply accept and as can be seen, there are still no other pieces that could help that could help this uh, cannon. So uh, let us backtrack a little bit C after C2 plus 4. What would happen if Black tried to def uh, use his, leave his cannon to protect the horse? That could simply charge the pawn across the river because if the elephant captured the pawn, the chariot would capture the horse. And having a pawn that crossed the river so early in the game uh, would spell a lot of trouble for black. So R2 plus 4 is played. Red accepts the sacrifice. Black gains a headhunter hunter cannon. Red would move his, uh, this is a very important move to make because red must guard this line it's because once uh, the chariot was prepared to uh, attack it would play r1 equals to 2 which would be met by red's r, uh, c8 plus 4 whereby the cannon would now advance forward and be protected by the chariot. Now within a, sp a span of few moves black's attack has been resolved and if need be red can always play c8 equals to 5 to force another trade of cannons and be uh, and he will be enjoying an advantage because he would have developed this material nicely so what would happen if black tried to attack with r8 plus 7 this chariot would be moved and protect this chair and again red will command the, in, the important lines so <clears throat> by this time let's say red consolidated his defense this would be the time for black to <coughs> for red to charge the pawn forward now this is a very very powerful move because uh, if the cannon if the cannon uh, were if uh, the elephant captured the pawn, Black would have uh, several ways of attacking. Let's say at this point in time, if Red rushed his moves and played C8 equals to 5 to try to trade material, because Black had already defended the central file, he could play R2 plus 3, and Black would, and Red would lose material instead. So that is why a better move would be to play P7 plus 1. And once this pawn crossed the river, even though Red tried to move his horse, the pawn would be advanced to one more intersection and it would now protect this cannon and be protected by the red chariot and also threaten to advance to attack the black horse. Uh, at this point in time, even though black's uh, cannon had already commanded the central file, there were no other pieces that could help it out. So black would not be able to master or coordinate any uh, useful def offense at this point in time. So at this point in time, Red will enjoy both the material and overall advantage. And the development of this horse uh, will not be a, will not be too big of an issue later as compared to the black horse. So uh, in this board, the main concept or the idea that uh, we can learn is that. Uh, even though you get a headhunter cannon, there must be other pieces to reinforce it or to help it out in attack. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the short lesson and the concepts that were presented. So a short recap. Uh, sorry. Pawn versus pawn. Thundering cannon. Elephant. And this will be the move of deception. In variation 1, see H8 plus 7 was played, which would seemingly be a uh, natural move to make, but uh, but Black would have other plans up his sleeve, and at the, in the end, Black would have gained a central cannon, and still uh, 
develop his material much faster than uh, than red. Uh, instead, it was advised that black that red should give up his central pawn, which is normally uh, ill advised to do so. But in this situation, it would seem to be the ninth, the correct um, approach. And after a series of um, trades, Red will be able to gain this very nice position uh, and command a significant advantage. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this short mod. If you like the work that I've been doing, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. Thank you.